So, for those looking for a resolution to the Large Hadron Collider video, I'm afraid I'm going to be a frightful scientific tease, but for good reason. Indeed, I'm excited about this. Excited like I've not been for years. So this guy, Edmund Haley, the guy with a big comet named after him, he really wanted to see one of these, but unfortunately died before one occurred. And this guy, Captain Cook, travelled halfway around the world to make observations of one of these. So I'm going to make observations of a transit of Venus. So if this is the Sun and this is the Earth, that's when Venus goes in front of the Sun. And these are rare, really rare, to the point where after the next one, which is on the 5th and 6th of June 2012, the next one will be in over 100 years, which in all likelihood means that this is the last chance in my life to make observations on one of these. Now, measuring the transit of Venus has been an iconic event in the scientific history of mankind in that it's what first allowed a good estimate to be obtained of the distance between the Earth and the Sun. Indeed, they're so valuable that it was worth sending Captain Cook here halfway around the world to Tahiti to make measurements on the transit of Venus. And that's not far off how far I'm going to have to travel. I'm currently in Europe where I was scheduled to do an experiment at a neutron reactor. And I'm going to have to travel all the way from there to the Hawaiian island of Hilo, where I'm going to go on top of the volcano Mauna Kea to hopefully near the Keck Observatory. Eh, seems like a natural place for scientists to accumulate to me. Now, when Cook first tried this, the only sensible way this could be funded is if a king underwrote the cost of the expedition. Now, while the numerical cost of going to the other side of the planet might not have changed that much, the mechanism of funding couldn't be more different. Indeed, now, the sun never sets on the people who made this expedition possible. Now, I've not secured Wi-Fi access yet, and it's not clear that I'll be able to, but if I can, I'll be sure to broadcast this event live such that people all over the world can see the climax of this expedition. And there are a couple of thank yous as well. Firstly, to Chris, who is as far as I can tell, works as a sort of outreach for Mauna Kea observatories. And he's agreed to lend me a couple of tracking mounts that will help me cover the transit of Venus. And these mounts would have been prohibitively expensive for me to either have transported to the island or to buy while I was there. So a big thank you to Chris. And secondly, a very big thank you to all of those who actually donated to this channel and made this scientific expedition possible. A very big thank you to you. It's a cute little crescent there, Venus, just with my camcorder, just to give you an idea how big Venus actually gets. Now the great thing is that um, I'm actually in Europe at the moment, where I was going to be doing an experiment at a reactor, but that got cancelled, which does now mean that I'm free to actually go and engage in what is pretty much a the scientific pilgrimage. So, oh wow, look at this. But this is pretty much what my pilgrimage is going to be about. So, to actually see the transit of Venus, I've got to go to Hawaii. Um, and so that's on the other side of the world. And the reason I'm going to do that is because, come back to Venus, out there somewhere. At the moment, Venus is. Uh, actually fairly near to us which is why it's, it's so big and the sun's over here in about 10 days time Venus is actually going to move in front of the disk of the sun and that's called a transit so you're going to get to see that little disk that little crescent go across the face of the sun now these are actually really rare to the point where the next one is in over a hundred years time so this is my my last chance in my lifetime to actually see one